And a very good morning behind the scenes interview time here at Worcester Radio and our good friend Rory Levandusky joining us today from the OSU Extension Office here in Wayne County. Rory, as always, good morning. Happy to have you in here. Glad to be here. Thanks, Ron. Uh, Rory, we're going to be talking today about safety around manure storage structures when preparing to A, pump and also haul manure. You know, we're at the time of year when livestock farmers uh, are, you know, that have manure storage generally at least try to get their manure storage structures emptied before crop planting takes place. So as farmers empty those structures and apply the manure to fields when weather permits, tell us about some of the safety issues that are involved for that. Sure. Um, yeah, and that's a good point, you know, when, when weather permits, because, of course, not uh, every day isn't suitable for hauling, so we have to look for those conditions. But as we get to the, those weather conditions then that permit that, uh, for the most part, we're talking about liquid manure storage structures here. Uh, they're most common usually on our hog and dairy operations. And the two most direct safety hazards associated with liquid manure structures are harmful health effects, uh, including up to death by asphyxiation from toxic manure gases, and then secondly, actually drowning in those structures. And every year we do hear tragic stories about deaths in and around liquid manure storage structures. So I think farmers, uh, farm managers, farm employees, and farm family members really need to be aware of some of the safety hazards and then take appropriate precautions. Rory, let's talk a little bit more in detail about manure gases. What are the gases that, that we're concerned with and how are they formed? And also, are there times of the year or maybe certain conditions in which they can be more hazardous than others? Sure, good questions. Uh, well, the gases of concern here include ammonia, carbon dioxide, methane, and hydrogen sulfide. Uh, these are all naturally, uh, those naturally occurring microorganisms in the manure produce these gases, so it's a natural process uh, as that manure decomposes, especially under anaerobic conditions, uh, which is what we see in those uh, liquid manure storage structures. Now, manure de decomposition then results in some continuous gas release, but generally those amounts are pretty low, so uh, particularly in those systems where crust forms on the surface of the structure, which is pretty common in our, our dairy situations. So really, of greater concern, concern are the large quantities of, of gases that are released when manure is agitated. And we agitate that manure to prepare it for the pumping and hauling. So in this spring season, as we look at, uh, we have a lot of manure out there in pits and lagoons and other storage structures that needs to be hauled. Uh, it'll get agitated first. And it's, again, during that agitation time, that's a time that manure haulers and applicators need to be aware of that potential safety risk. What are these specific safety risks, Rory, when we're talking about manure gases? Are all of the gases equally harmful? You mentioned about four of them there, uh, and all of them bad, obviously. Uh, and, and, and also, just how concentrated are the gases you're talking about, and what kind of levels do people need to be concerned with? I mean, how bad is, is you know, how much is bad? Uh, and, and then finally, as I throw question after question right at you, what are some of the symptoms or harmful health effects that people need to be cognizant of? Okay. Well, most often the presence of those manure gases, uh, they're measured in terms of, of parts per million. Uh, to provide some perspective, uh, 10,000 parts per million would be equal to about 1% by volume in our, our atmosphere. Uh, and hydrogen sulfide is really the gas of greatest concern. And it's hydrogen sulfide that's really responsible for most of our manure-related deaths. So if we hear those really tragic situations that involve death, it's usually because of hydrogen sulfide. Uh, and their effects on, on both people and livestock. So we can have both of these things lost because of hydrogen sulfide. Uh, with hydrogen sulfide, within just seconds, uh, exposure to levels of 700 parts per million, uh, consciousness can be lost, and death can occur within minutes. Uh, this gas has that characteristic rotten egg smell, and it actually can be detected. We can detect it at levels of, of 1 to 1.5 parts per million, so extremely low levels. Uh, it begins to be offensive uh, to our senses at 3 to 5 parts per million. And when we actually get them to levels of 100 to 150 parts per million in that, of that hydrogen sulfate, we actually lose our sense of smell. Uh, because it actually paralyzes those nerve endings uh, in our nose, and, and so we don't smell it anymore. So that makes it really dangerous. If we get up to levels of 1,000 parts per million and higher, uh, that exposure can cause nearly instantaneous death. 
So hydrogen sulfide, uh, we also have a concern because it's heavier than air. So it's not as easily dispersed as manure gases. So again, you think about even in an open pit situation, uh, pumping of it, sometimes those pits are, are higher. Uh, if, if the operator is walking down below the level of that pit, uh, you're agitating, that gas can flow out of the pit and run downhill and be right where that operator is at. So uh, it's also a gas that's killed persons who have uh, entered empty manure pits or even uh, we've even had cases where just folks who have stuck their head down into an empty manure tanker, maybe looking to clean something out, see what's left in there. Uh, that's been enough that they've been overcome. So it's really nothing to fool around with. Rory Levandusky, our guest in studio again today, talking about uh, safety measures and the risks when talking about pumping uh, and hauling liquid manure. Rory, what about the other three manure gases you mentioned? You mentioned ammonia, methane, and carbon dioxide. Talk about the health risks that they pose and, and again, symptoms that would indicate a problem. Sure. Uh, well, both methane and carbon dioxide, they're, they're odorless and colorless, so obviously very hard to detect. Uh, makes that really difficult. Uh, the primary risk that they pose is that they displace oxygen on a one-to-one -one level. So when oxygen levels falls below about 19.5%, uh, there are definitely detrimental health uh, impacts. Now to put that in context, the oxygen content in our atmosphere is about 20.9%. So there's not a lot of room there, obviously, to play around with because as we fall below 19.5%, we run into health effects. So uh, that means there's really an immediate risk to life at levels of about 40,000 parts per million. Uh, and in addition, methane is explosive at levels of 50,000 parts per million and higher. Now ammonia, on the other hand, uh, that, that third gas, uh, it's a gas that has a really sharp, pungent odor. So we, we all are, I think, familiar with ammonia smells. Levels of 50 to 100 parts per million cause eye and nose irritation, uh, strong coughs as a result of irritation to our respiratory tract and passages. Uh, that occurs at about 50 to 150 parts per million. And then if we have exposure to levels of uh, 2,500 to 4,500 parts per million for 30 minutes or more, that can be lethal. Uh, and exposure to levels of 5,000 parts per million and higher can, again, result in instant death. So once again, uh, none of these gases are things to fool around with. Uh, they're all present in manure, especially as we agitate, they're released, and so you just need to really be careful. Okay, bad stuff. We've talked about right. uh, the risks out there. What kind of precautions should people take, you know, who are, you know, doing the, the agitating, the pumping and the hauling? What do people need to do to make sure that, that their health is, is where it needs to be and that they remain safe when doing these jobs? Right. Well, obviously, awareness of that potential hazard is, is first and foremost. Uh, so, you know, just being forewarned, uh, you know, is forearmed. So we think about that. Uh, you need to remind workers of the potential hazard. So, it's, you know, some maybe uh, reminders and education on farm. And then providing continuous and adequate ventilation is necessary if you're, if you're pumping out of a confined space. So anything in a pit below a building, make sure that ventilation is, is happening during that point. Uh, so with any manure storage structures, you need that additional ventilation. Uh, take those precautions during agitation of the pit in preparation for that manure removal. Now of utmost importance, never, never enter a pit without taking all the necessary precautions. And those precautions include ventilation of the space before entry and continuously while working in the space. Uh, you should be using a two-person system always working around these manure structures where one person is always watching and remains outside the pit. Uh, if you do have to enter a, a pit where a body harness with a fall arrest and a retrieval system any time that, that pit is entered, uh, oftentimes the recommendation is also going to be that you should have a, a supplemental air supply that, uh, that you're going in there so you're not trying to breathe these manure gases at all. Uh, in addition, all farm family members and all farm employees should be taught about the potential dangers of a confined space manure system. Uh, make sure there's a, a written plan for entry and emergency response and review that plan annually. Now, while our, our open air manure storage structures such as lagoons generally are less hazardous in terms of harmful gas concentration buildups compared to those confined space structures, again, those same gases are present. And family farm members and employees need to be aware of those potential harmful effects. Danger from manure gases uh, in these structures are greatest, again, under agitation conditions. So 
think about uh, you know the operation being done and also uh, when there's times of little or no air movement or we have warm humid conditions so if those conditions are present again take extra precautions and, and be aware well rory we've been talking about the danger of manure gases but at the beginning of the program, you said that the other direct safety hazard around liquid manure storage structures was drowning. Uh, talk, if you would, about you know that, and, and again, sure. ways to, to prevent that from happening. Right. Uh, well, sometimes it, it's simply as a result from accidentally slipping and falling into the lagoon. Sometimes there's uh, slippery situations uh, around the edge of the lagoon, uh, you know, especially early when we look at early spring, there might be a frosty morning. Uh, maybe you slip and fall in. Some of these have, have uh, fairly sharp uh, inclines to them. Uh, at other times, it's, it's been the fact that the lagoon is crusted over, and it may even have some vegetation growing on it, and the surface certainly looks solid enough to walk on. Uh, and, or maybe you don't know exactly where that edge is, and so you start to walk out on it. Uh, that crust breaks, and the person falls in. Uh, there have been situations where a track or some other piece of equipment with a person in it rolls into the lagoon. Again, typically as you're preparing to get that pump set up to begin to agitate the lagoon. Again, those sides can be slippery. Uh, maybe the brakes don't hold on the tractor or something happens. You're not aware of where that edge is. Tractor rolls in and, and the person uh, with it. Uh, once you fall in, even if you know how to swim, uh, it can be difficult to get out because of the thickness of the liquid. Uh, that floating crust, again, can make it difficult to move. And in addition, remember those manure gases that we talked about uh, at the surface. Now they're going to be causing difficulties with breathing. And as you thrash around, uh, more gas is being released. And so that's another uh, potential hazard. So drowning is a very real risk. And you, again, just need to be cognizant of, of that fact. In addition to just being cognizant of your surroundings, some other precautions that people can take, Rory? Right. Well, safety and management practices typically around those open air manure storage structures should include warning signs. Uh, so again, people who may not be aware, and again, if it's crusted over, they should be aware that, hey, this is a manure storage structure. Uh, keep away. Uh, there's danger involved. Put a fence around the structure if at all possible. There should be life-saving equipment, uh, almost like a, you're, you know, like a swimming pool. But think about a, a reaching pole, a ring preserver on a rope, or even just a, a rope to be able to throw out there and station at various points around that structure. Uh, education and annual review of potential hazards and emergency rescue response should be reviewed and, and gone over with employees and people who will be working uh, around those structures. Uh, keep the phone numbers of local fire department and rescue squad posted nearby and never send a single family member or farm employee in to do work or maintenance around the structure. Always make sure there's a second person who should be on site, uh, maybe you know, just watching an emergency emergency role response. Uh, again, seconds count in these types of situations. Well, some good advice today, Rory, as we get set to wrap things up. Uh, where can someone get more information on any or all of what we discussed today? Sure. They can contact the Wayne County Extension Office at 330-264-8722. And again, we do try to get these uh, uh, programs posted, again, courtesy of WQKT Radio, on our website, so you can review them there as well. All right. Once again, our guest in studio here on Behind the Scenes from the OSU Extension Office in Wayne County, Rory Levandusky. Rory, as always, thanks again for coming in. Appreciate it. Thanks, Ron.